also just last night I watched on Hulu an Arnold Schwarzenegger film I had not seen before okay end of days from 1999 I remember when this came out I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger on TRL with Carson Daly kind of promoting it a little weird thing for him to be on but they were playing a Mandy Moore song I'm missing you like candy and then Arnold's talking about how hot she is and then Carson's like she's 15 he's like oh never mind <laughs> anyways end of days is surprisingly pretty good um, I wouldn't say it's great it's not one of the best Arnold films but it might be his last good film uh, because this has the look of a major film yeah I mean late 90s films the best of the 90s I mean you go to early 90s the best looking 90s stuff looks so much better than the shit we have now why we have real explosions yeah there's some CGI fire here but it's not like Marvel superhero shit where everything's CGI fire I mean we got shit blowing up Arnold still looking like he can get stuff done uh, he's kicking ass taking names it's a pretty hard R and I think this actually works pretty well being so R-rated because of the theme here so 1979 we have the birth of a baby that is said to mate with Satan and bring like bad times for humanity the end of days the Pope has ordered people out to go look for this baby but evidently the devil worshippers have found her first and she's born in New York City her name's Christine we catch up with her 20 years later she's prayed by and I think I've heard this name now Robin Tunney I thought it was Tooney but anyways um, she's pretty cute I think we know that well Arnold is a very depressed ex-cop who does some kind of semi-illegal bodyguard stuff he's escorting a uh, a Wall Street guy who he doesn't know is actually Satan why he needs an escort guess cuz he thinks he's gonna get assassinated by Pope's guys how do the Pope know who who he is how I mean you, we've got this guy who is uh, who read the sign that the the baby was being born but he couldn't intercept the baby get to her like I kind of think in a lot of ways this could have been very interesting if the first half of the movie forgive me for saying this was Sans Arnold and focused on this kid uh, being raised in, in kind of like this omen type way but yeah we could be looking at an omen ripoff if that were the case instead we kind of fast forward here so it's like omen 3 or 2 for that might well maybe 3 we, we kind of like flash forward and now we we have this circumstance but we get the idea that she's a good she's a force of good anyways but uh, anyways Arnold's protecting the guy this uh, rogue priest guy tries to take him out there's really good action as Arnold chases him down there's an actual helicopter we see Arnold and his best pal Kevin Pollock who's basically playing what would have been the Tom Arnold role here like let's say it like that that's basically what he's doing okay but it, he's the goofy sidekick who, who really proposes no threat to Arnold uh, masculinity you know but but I but I kind of enjoyed him and the movie was stronger when he was in it uh, anyways there's this awesome scene where he's chasing him down this priest guy he's on top of the skyscraper jumps out of the helicopter gets this rope flies at him and shit and this is the director of cinematography here is also the director uh, Peter Hames Himes could be saying that wrong don't really care and he made sure that this had a good strong look to it uh, you know the cinematography is strong here uh, not just the the way the camera is moving and and uh, trying to keep things interesting and creepy and and giving this weird 
religious horror theme to it with a creature feature and Arnold. But you know, just also the colors are better than we get today. When scenes are dark, it's not, hey, why is everything murky? Why is everything gray? It's nothing like that. You know, things look natural. Yeah, the rooms are just naturally lit reddish, but or warm for that matter. Anyways, Arnold catches up with this priest guy. He ends up going to the hospital. Doesn't realize it, but uh, the guy he was guarding is Satan's new body, Gabriel Byrne. And Gabriel Byrne was in another movie I started watching on Amazon, but then I realized it was on Hulu, and now it's not on Hulu anymore, with a similar theme, Stigmata, from the same year even. So I kind of want to check that out. But I thought Gabriel Byrne gave a pretty good performance here. Just some Wall Street broker, he's having some dinner with some people, goes to the restroom, he's washing his hands, the devil possesses him, chooses him somehow. They said that there was a body chosen. I kind of would have liked for them to get into this. But I can kind of see a Wall Street broker being the type of guy the devil chooses. So then he goes out to the dinner, has this like, I, I really like the way the music is like, whoo. Uh, like there's these effects that just give you this, this must be a bad guy vibe. Gropes the chick, has her boob out of her dress, kisses her. The husband's like, what? And he's like, oh. And it's like, oh, it's on now, right? It's kind of a cool thing. I'm headed towards people. I'm talking about stuff like this. We're turning around. So, uh, yeah, as the movie goes on, Gabriel Byrne does more creepy, weird, I'm a devil, I can do whatever I want, fun type shit. Kid mouths off to him on skateboard, distracts the kid. I mean, he even kind of played with it. He's like, hey, I like your shirt. I just said Satan rules. And the kid, kid told him to get lost or something you know, along those terms. And then uh, he just has him crash into a bus and shit. Hooks up with a guy, uh, one of the, I guess, doctor devil worshippers that's uh, watching out for Christine. Robin Tunney. Yeah, hooks up with that guy's wife and daughter, and the guy seems to be perfectly okay with it. Then later punches him, like, through the head. They had a lot of fun with the Satan stuff here. And they also played some of this uh, devil-on-your-shoulder type thing. So, as stuff's going down, Arnold realizes that they're looking for this girl, and they find her. But there's these Pope people that have been sent out, and they're going to try to kill her to try to prevent her from mating with the, the devil. So that's understandable, I guess. But, you know, they don't want to have any of that. Some of the priests, including like Rod Steiger, says that uh, we have to have some faith. We have to try to persevere and do the right thing. We can't fight evil by doing evil. And Arnold's really the guy on the other side of the fence here. Because he lost his family from a home invasion. These guys were looking at him for... for uh, testifying and he lost his wife and daughter and that's a pretty like powerful scene to think about uh, being able to relive that experience the devil kind of heckled to Arnold about this and he's like hey you know I can bring them back it's like but they're not real it's not this doesn't matter and then Arnold like starts to attack him and shit but uh, you know Kevin Pollock he's got like these nice little one-liners and things he gets kind of like blown up the devil's like taking out surveillance and all this stuff and yeah, I realize I'm jumping around here. There's also a scene where like, out of nowhere, when Christine's getting attacked or, or about to be, it's like, hey, get ready, you're gonna meet somebody. Rips her shirt off, it's boobs out, and then gets attacked by these priest guys that are trying to kill her, and she fights them off while her boobs, like, wha-bam. And it's like, okay. Was that intentional shit? This is like for a frame or two. But uh, anyways, Kevin Pollock's blown up, but he's brought back to life by the devil. Only you're not really sure, because you're not really sure what the limitations are to the devil's powers while he's in this pursuit here. And if you can knock the move for something, you might do it for that. Just be like, hey, he's the devil, why don't he just do this? Can he just take over Arnold? I, like, why can't he? So it's like if you're fighting Q from Star Trek TNG, what can you do really? And I think that's a part of a problem I have with this film. It's just a lot of it's like, oh, are we? do we have rules? 
What are they? Like how, like how amazing is Arnold that he can go toe to toe with the devil? Like, let's think about that for a second. So is this like a massive ego stroke here? You know, in some ways it it's kind of seems that way. But I wouldn't call it a pure action movie. There's, it's definitely straddling the line of this like religious horror motif stuff. And there were certainly times where I thought like, maybe Arnold's not the right guy for this. But you could see his acting range here better than in Aftermath. You could see that he was depressed, that he was hurting inside. You know, as things go on, he catch, he he thinks that uh, Kevin Pollock's on his side, but he isn't because he he I guess he made a deal with the devil while he was burning, and that gave away the position of Christine, and now the devil's got her, but Arnold's got to go catch her, and he got, heads to the place where the sacrifice is going down. The hour before, well, it's not really a sacrifice; it's a mating ritual. The hour into New Year's, Arnold has a good joke about that. Oh, is this Eastern time? <laughs> like, like how convenient and shit. But you know what? There were some decent enough actors here to really give that kind of weight where you could kind of take this story halfway seriously. And Arnold's fighting like a bunch of dudes in this alley and shit. He kind of gets crucified. He's rescued by Rod Stagger. He meets up with Christine and the Devil. He's having out with them. Chase onto a subway. Arnold's got, got like, he went to like the commando gun store prior to this. He's got all kinds of shit on him. I don't know how, and I think they gloss this over to have fun with it. Like, where did Arnold get all this guns and shit? Oh, he's some kind of high-spec bodyguard. Okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, they don't really say too much because that would have unraveled it more. Get on this subway, and the devil's on the, su on the subway cart, like, fighting him and shit, and he's shooting up in the roof like a T2 elevator, blowing stuff away. Unlocks the cars or decouples them, whatever you want to call it. Shit's blowing up everywhere. They hold on to the to the rail. There's part where he tries to teach her how to use the gun. Another big distraction with the movie though is the Christine character really has no development. We don't have much of an idea of how she handles shit. She just said something to a guy on a subway, hey, here's some money, go away. And the guy's like, oh, he's gonna screw you. And then he like falls apart in glass in a very 1999 CGI effect. Like, little things like that kind of detract from the film. But a lot of the practical and the miniatures look great. The subway blows up. There's fire everywhere. Arnold and Christine are perfectly okay because he's Arnold. And uh, they chase into this church. There's a mob chasing him. They, they board the doors up. But he knows the devil's coming after him still. The devil leaves, like, Gabriel burn body. And it goes into Arnold. And Arnold's like, oh, shit, what's going to happen now? He tells her to hide and all this. But then he's like, hey, we won, time's up. All right, now we're gonna do this. And then Arnold gets her on the altar. And then, it, but uh, this church has got blown to shit. And there's a sword on the ground. Arnold like fights it and dives on the sword and dies. The one time a human Arnold dies in a movie. I know if I haven't seen Killing Guther, I'll probably be checking that out sometime. Maybe even before I post this, in case some of you assholes wanna ruin that for me in the spoilers and the comments and whatever. Yep, Arnold gets killed. And she's like, hey, I'm sorry, and that's the movie right there. So Arnold dies defeating the devil in a pretty well-budgeted, well-produced movie that I think mildly bombed. That's kind of unfortunate. The last time Arnold really got a quality treatment in Hollywood. You know, because after this he goes on to be governor. And then after that they really have a lot of questions about star power, the last stand, I guess you could make a point. You know, it was, what was that sound? The last stand sure, certainly had a major film look to it, but not in the way this was. This was supposed to be a tent pole. So, at the end of days, overall, I liked it. I give it three and a half, sorry, whoa, 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 whoa. Three out of four stars.